Hi, welcome back to the Woodworking Shed. And in today's project video, I'm going to show how I made this. It's a circle cutting jig for use with my bandsaw. And it can cut 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 or 14 inch rounds for me. So you join me here at my bandsaw. First thing we're going to need to do is measure it all up. Now, I'm cutting out, I'm sorry, I'll be using this to cut out pieces of wood or blanks that will be going on my lathe. That's predominantly what it's for. So I want to make sure that this will cope with the biggest size that my lathe will cope with. And my lathe will cope with 350 millimeters or 14 inches, give or take. So obviously when you're dealing with uh, with everything, everything's halved. So that means seven inches is what I'm looking for as a center point to the cutting blade. So cutting blades here, and if I measure out from there, seven inches just about comes to the edge of the table, which is great. But obviously I want a little bit more than that so that there's room for a pivot point. So I know that the minimum that this can be is eight inches, but I probably want to make it just a little bit wider. This way, um, I kind of want it to straddle the whole area, but I also want it to overhang at this point just here. Um, and you'll see why later. So I'm going to measure that there. And that is 300 and, sorry, 348. And if we said 350, because for these purposes that doesn't really matter, but it doesn't need to go all the way to the back either especially when you consider that the cutting point is going to be here, which is seven inches, and that's as far back as it goes. So I can get away with it being only 30 centimeters. So I'm gonna uh, cut a piece of wood this way that is probably 37 centimeters. 37 centimeters, right, so I'm gonna write this down first, draw myself a little diagram. So 37 centimeters. And as I said before, that needs to be at the minimum 20 centimeters. Okay, two other measurements I need to take while I'm here. First of all, this one. So this is the, the T track, and I need to measure how wide it is. So zero in the, um, the calipers. And if I just put that inside there, that is coming as 9.3, let's see how accurate they are, 9.27, 9.2, yeah, just one more at the back, just to be on the safe side, 9.2. So I know that that is 9.2 millimeters. Draw that on as well, 9.2. The next thing to measure is here. And I want to measure the depth of this. And that is 10.2. Okay, 10.2. Oh, and I need to measure the depth of this as well, actually, while I'm here. And that is Whoops. Eight point eight. Eight point eight. Okay. Now I need to find some wood and head over to the table saw. So before I get on to the next step, um, I've already cut these pieces. I did this on the bandsaw because they were so small. And unfortunately, I, I completely forgot to press the record button. So um, this is gonna be the one that goes in the T-track and this is gonna be the one for the front. So I'll put these to one side for the moment. These are both made from um, nine mil ply. Right, I've, I also found this off cut of 18 mil ply, which is absolutely perfect because it measures 
43 that way and 22 that way. And I needed 20 that way. So I'm not even going to bother to cut that. And 37 that way. So let's just set that cut up. <clears throat> so set this to 37. Make sure everything's set up and in place. Okay, this is going to be noisy. Okay, so back to the bandsaw, and you can see that I've placed several washers in this T track. And by doing that, it means when I put this wood in, it will raise it up ever so slightly. Not a lot, but a little. So if I place that on there now, and I'm purposely going over in both directions, I've purposely made this bit too long. Now that is ever so slightly proud. So what I'm gonna do now is just gonna run a bead of glue along it. Just gonna put a couple of tacks in that. Okay, now I'm gonna take that off and deal with the mess. Okay, so now I'm all cleaned up. I've put another three washers across the front and I'm gonna do the same thing with this piece of wood. <clears throat> so a little bit of glue. And now I can place this on it. It's so with the bandsaw all cleaned up again and all the uh, all the squeeze out removed. I've also got rid of all the squeeze out off of here, cleaned it all up, a couple more nails in here. Um, I haven't bothered across the front, it's not so important. Um, so Right, I need to leave that to dry, but let's just test it out for a second. So that sort of fits into there, and it means that that won't go that way any further. While I'm here, I'm gonna take the opportunity to mark out where I want the holes to be. So using a, a square, I've, cl well, I've clamped this down, pushed it as far that way as I can. Using a square held against the, the fence, which I know may not be 100% accurate, but it's about as accurate as I can get it. I'm gonna just draw a line across here now that gives me a good starting point I'll need to continue it on and I also need to mark the distance from the blade so reset the calipers and what I'm gonna do is set this to a hundred mil if I set this to exactly 100 mil okay so that's 100 mil now i know that the bandsaw blade is going to move around a little bit when it's cutting but if i get it roughly right at this point so it's just touching on the blade and that's 100. okay now we've got my mark so i know that that's 100 mil from the blade and i've got this straight line to work with so using that line as a guide I have marked and done a center punch into one inch, two inch, three, four, five, six, and seven inch. 
which gives me possible cutout sizes of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 and 14. So now what I need to do is I need to drill a hole. And I drill a hole for a locating pin to sit into. So I'm only going to go down 10 mil. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go down six, yeah, 10 mil into the wood. And I'm drilling it 5.5 millimeters because that's the size of the locating pin that I've got, which I need to make in a second. So let's do cut these first. Help if it was plugged in. Now these does need to be quite accurate. First one. With all the holes now drilled out, um, I've also written uh, on here in pen and permanent marker what the sizes are so that I know for future reference. And I talked about the, the locating pin. Now I've used this. Uh, this is just a mild steel rod. Um, there's nothing particularly fancy about it, and I've just cut off a small, a small section. But I've made sure that the length of it it fits in the hole, and it's exactly 10 mil proud. It's actually a fraction over. It's 10.15 or something I measured it to, which should mean that if I drill a 10 mil hole into the piece of wood that I want to drill a circle into, there will be an ever so slightly bit of raisinous off of this so probably won't make any difference but you know trying to be precise now this steel rod is actually the same steel rod that you would have on one of those sort of filing desk organizers you know you have like the three trays and these are actually one of the legs that sort of supports the trays and you can buy these off of ebay or amazon or anything like that and you can, they're very very cheap so anyway, that's what i've used now i'm gonna do a test with this now and i'm gonna use a six inch hole and I have a scrap of plywood that I'm going to try and cut a, a circle with. Now, what you now want to do with that piece of plywood, we just grab it. So what you want to do with this piece of plywood is you obviously want to make sure that you're going to be able to cut a circle out of it. You need to find the, the center point and making sure that that's exact, you know, no, no less than three inches in any direction from the edge, because I want a six inch hole. And then you need to drill a hole that matches the same diameter as this rod. So I'm going to use the 5.5 and you want to drill to 10 mil. Once I've done that, I'll come back and we'll test this out. Here is the hole that I drilled and I've put my locating pin at six inches. So now all I need to do is just put this on the hole. As you can see, it's just a scrappy piece of, uh, of something I was testing my branding out on. Um, okay, so you can see that rotates quite nicely. Now, Obviously, I can't push it all the way in. I'm going to have to do that on as I, you know, cutting at the same time. So, all right, let's switch it on and see how we go. And then we have our circle. So we'll cut out. So that's worked really well. The only downside I've found to this is actually the bandsaw. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't have a lot of power and trying to cut out a circle, um, yeah, it was it was struggling. It might be the blade, it might be, although I think actually the biggest problem is to do with the belt on this bandsaw. Uh, it could do with being replaced really. Um, anyway, there we go, one circle cutting jig. So I hope you found that useful. Um, Feel free to make one, leave a comment, um, let me know what you think. See you again soon.